Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm very well. That's good. And what about you? I'm good too. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, now we are going to start session number two of this second week. Um, now we are going to talk about a uh, different topic. Uh, we are going to talk about participle uh, adjectives. Uh, we are going to know what are those uh, words, how can we use them, and also we are going to have a list of words that we can use as a participle adjective. And also we are going to have some examples. So we are going to start with the presentation of the document in which we are going to have the whole information about the participle adjective. So let me say this. To this space. So, participle adjectives. What are these words and how can we use it? And also, how can we create um, sentences or all of that information with these uh, participle adjectives? So, we have that some participles like boy or boring can be used as adjectives. Uh, they are used in a slightly different way from normal adjectives. We usually use the past participle ending with ed to talk about how someone feels. So in that case, we are going to use different words as an adjective, but in that case, um, they have like a slightly different way from the normal adjectives that we tend to use when we are talking. And also it says that we use the ED ending to talk about how someone is feeling. So now we're going to write some of the specification or the general things about the participle adjectives. Can be used as, as adjectives. In this case, the past participle are the words that end with ed. To talk about how someone feels. And we have some examples. Here we have, I was really bored during the fly. I was really bored during the fly. That is the sentence, but we say that um, in that case, we are saying that we feel something when we are in the fly but we cannot use sentence like this. 
I was really going during the flight. So in that case, we are not using that kind of a structure in those sentences. So in that case, we are using words because we are talking about feelings, something that we feel. So the correct structure is, I was really bored during the flight. No, I was really boring during the flight. Another one, it says, she's interested in, in history. She is interested in history. And we are not going to say, she's really interesting. in history. Es como decir, ella está interesada en historia. No es ella realmente interesante en historia. En ese caso vamos a utilizar, ¿verdad? Esas palabras con el ending ed to represent the feeling. And we have another one, John frightened of a spider. Dan is frightened of a spider. And we are not going to say, John is frightening of a spider. So in that case, we're not going to use the ing form because in that case, we can change a little bit the meaning of the sentence that we are uh, constructing and we are losing the, uh, the main idea of the sentence that we are going to use. We usually uh, use the present participle that are the words ending in ing to talk about the person thing or situation would have caused the feeling. So remember, in the first thing, we are using the past participle to talk about someone feel, but we are using the present participle to talk about the person, thing, or situation which has caused the feeling. Así que el pasado participio lo vamos a utilizar para hablar de los sentimientos de alguien, de cómo se sintió, pero el presente participio, que es el ING, lo vamos a utilizar para hablar de la persona, de la situación o de la cosa que causó ese sentimiento. So we have the example. And we're going to use this one. Okay, we have the first example. It was such a long, boring flight. It was such a long, Boring flight. So I was 
born. So in that situation, I was born because of the flight, because it was long and boring. So that is the cause that I am feeling bored. Estamos hablando de la situación que me hizo a mí sentirme aburrida. Y en ese caso, quien hizo que yo me aburriera es el, el vuelo que fue bastante largo y que por obvias razones fue aburrido. So, en ese caso, yo me aburrí por el vuelo. So, in that case, the flight is the situation that caused my feeling. Next one. I read a really interesting book about history. I read a really about history. So I was interested. So, because I read that interesting book, I feel interested in history. Yo leí un libro que era muy interesante acerca de la historia, acerca de historia, y por eso yo me interesé. Leí un libro interesante sobre historia y yo me sentí interesada. So, in that case, the book is the thing that made me feel interested. So in that case, when we are talking in the situation, the person or the thing that caused the feeling, I am going to use the present participle or the ing form of the verb. Next one, many people find spiders frightening. So they are frightened when they see spiders. So they are causing that I feel something. So in that case, the spider is the thing that um, is making me feel frightened. But be careful. Unborn is very different from unborn. Unborn means cause uh, or cause other people to be born. This is not good. And we have some examples. So in the case of boring and bored are slightly different. So it's saying I am boring significa que yo hago que otras personas se sientan aburridas. So in that case is kind of different. So in that case, we are going to say, or we are going to uh, see some examples in which cases a person is making or causing a feeling in another person. So we are going to see the example. Next 
that we have here. I was talking to such a boring guy. Of the body. He talked about himself for an hour. En el ejemplo, estaba hablando con un chico muy aburrido. En la fiesta, él habló acerca de él mismo por una hora. In that case, I feel bored when I was talking with that boring guy. So in that case, he is making me feel bored because he was talking about himself all the time. Another one. She is a really interesting woman. She, is, um, she has lived all over the world and I speak five languages. And the next one, my math teacher at school was really frightening. He was always shouting at the students. So in that case, those people is um, making us feel something different. So in that case, they are creating a feeling. So in that case, we are going to use the ing form of the uh, words to express the ideas that we have about those uh, those people. These possible adjectives may be comparative by using more not er and there is a quality by using most nor est remember that we are using adjectives so in that case they have the comparative and also they have the superlative as the other adjectives that we already know estos adjetivos porque obviamente estamos hablando de adjetivos también tienen su modo superlativo y su modo um, comparativo, solo que en el caso del comparativo vamos a utilizar more y no el er que normalmente se le pone a los adjetivos y para el superlativo vamos a utilizar más y no el est que se le agrega a los adjetivos.
And we have some examples. We have here number one, I was more frightened of dogs than spiders when I was a child. Second one, that book is more boring than this one. And we have, I think, Dr. Smith lesson was more interesting than Dr. Brown. So in that case, we have the comparative one and we have the superlative one. I was more frightened of dogs than spiders. We are making a comparison between dogs and spiders and saying that I was more frightened of dogs than a spider when I was a child. Then we have that book is more boring than this one. That is also comparative because we are comparing two books. And the last one, I think Dr. Smith's lesson was more interesting than Dr. Brown. I am making a comparison between the two classes. Then we are going to have some uh, superlative um, example and it says, for 24 hours on the flight to Australia, I was the mask. I was the mask for I've ever been. It has not comparison with other flight or with other um, experience than in this one. So in that case, it's this a uh, superlative sentence. Then I think this is the most interesting talk we have here today. So there are no other talks that is interesting than this one. It was the most frightening film that he ever seen. ever seen. So we are going to write a list of words um, that we can use as a as a participle adjective. I am going to write the word, the adjective, and I'm going to write a sentence. And based on that list, we are going to have um, exercise. 
Puede escribir una lista de adjetivos que podemos utilizar eh, en este tema. Y voy a poner un ejemplo por cada uno de los adjetivos que vayamos escribiendo. Y luego vamos a tener un ejercicio basado en esa lista. Así que voy a hacer la lista. Ustedes van leyendo el adjetivo, el ejemplo, y luego le voy a ir poniendo los ejercicios. It's time of long list. We are going to see. Okay. We have 20 examples, a lot of examples. So we have the first one, N is the word alarming. And we have alarm. En este cuadro vamos a tener las dos versiones. La versión del adjetivo que es con el ing y la versión que es con ig. Acuérdense que las que llevan ing son los causantes y el id es lo que sentimos. ¿la? El ing para lo que lo causa o para que es el detonante de la emoción y los que llevan ed son las emociones, son los feelings. So, in this case, we have the sentence, one alarming noise. And for this one, we have, I was alarmed by the loud bang. So in this case, the sound, the noise is alarming and is making me feel alarmed because I am scared of something is happening. Number two, I'm missing. And, and we have the first example. That TV program is really a mess. And we have this one that is the feeling. He was to hear this little song singing in the van. Next, we have boring. And we have seen this example, boring. And we have for boring, I've never seen such a boring film. I've never seen such a boring film. And for the feeling, we have The students look bored as the teacher talks and talks. Next one is confusing. And we have confused. For the confusing or the thing that is 
making us feel on something, we have the following example. I find these instructions very confusing. So you come and help me. And for the feeling, we have, I was confused because I asked two people and they told me two different things. Then we have another one that is depressing. And we have depressed. For this one, we have this weather is depressing. It is ever going to stop raining. And we have depressed, that is the feeling. I was feeling depressed. So I stay at home. With hot chocolate. And a good book. We have an embarrassing embrace. I mean, with bubble. That's good. So we have for this one. That is the most embarrassing photo. I look terrible. John was really embarrassed when he fell over in front of his new girlfriend. So, then we have exciting and excited. For exciting, we have, it's a really exciting book. I couldn't I couldn't wait to find out what happened at the end. Then we have excited, that is the feeling. I'm so excited. I 
I'm going on a holiday tomorrow. We have another one, and it's exhausting. Then we have exhausting. For this one, we have, I hate doing housework is exhausting. Then for the feeling, we have Julie was so exhausted after her exam. She spent the next three days sleeping. Fascinating and fascinating. For fascinating, we have the brain is fascinating, isn't it? It's amazing how much it can do. Fascinated, that is the feeling. Joan was fascinated by her grandmother's stories of life in the 1920s. Frightening. I'm frightened. For this one, we have what a frightening film. I don't want to walk home on my own now. The feeling, it says, I was really frightened of these when I was little, but I don't mind them now. Next one, frustrating and frustrated. It 
it says, it's the saying when you want to say something in another language, but you don't know the word. And for frustrating, it says, I try all morning to send an email, but it wouldn't work. I was so frustrated. Interesting interest. So for interesting, we have that was a very interesting book. And for interesting. She is interested in animals, so she's thinking of studying to be a vet. Overwhelming and overwhelmed. And we have, I found London a bit overwhelming. It's uh, busy and noisy. For the feeling, we have Julie felt overwhelmed. She moved house, got a new job, and was learning to drive all the all at the same time. Then we have relaxing and relax. We have just seven words more and we are going to end 
day and leave. So we are going to continue with this. Relaxing, and it says, a nice hot bath is relaxing after a long day. Relaxed. She was so relaxed. Sitting in front of the fire. That she didn't want to move. Then we have satisfying or satisfied. And it says, John loves his new job. As a teacher. He said it's very satisfying when he makes a student understand. And for the feeling that is satisfied, I'm very satisfied that I managed to order the meal in French. Shocking and a shock. What a shocking crime. It's terrible. And we have for the feeling, I was shocked when my co-worker admitted stealing some money. Surprising and surprise. For surprising, we have it's surprising how many people don't want to travel to another country. And for a surprise, 
She was surprised when she arrived at her class and found the other students doing an exam. And we have just three more and we are going to end. So we have terrifying and terrified. Or terrifying, we have what a terrifying dog is cute. And for terrified, my little son is terrified of the dark. We always leave a light on his room at night. And we have thrilling and thriller. What thrilling music? It's some. Some of the most beautiful. Music I've ever heard. I was thrilled to win a first prize in the competition. And the last one, fighting and fire. The last example says, my job is really tiring. I don't get home until 10 p.m. Sometimes. And there's a sample for tire. Babies desire to come. To the cinema. Tonight. It's going to go. To bed early. So we have a twenty uh, words, twenty examples 
or I mean, without 40, because we have 20 in each um, list. So we have a, one group of words in which we are talking about the situation or the person or the thing that is um, doing something in us. And we have 20 samples of words in which we are going to use it for feelings. Tenemos 40 ejemplos, 20, que son los que se usan con ING, que nos habla de las situaciones, ¿verdad? Nos habla de qué es lo que está pasando y cómo esto puede afectar a nuestras emociones. Y tenemos 20 ejemplos que tienen que ver con nuestras emociones y cómo algo detona esa emoción. Así que recuerden, cuando estamos utilizando este tipo de adjetivos que son conocidos como participle adjective, tenemos dos tipos, los ING y los ED. Los ING son aquellas situaciones, ¿verdad?, que nos llevan a, eh, pues, un sentimiento. Y los ED son los sentimientos que esa cosa, esa persona, esa situación provocan. So, in some cases, we are going to use ED for feeling and ENG, or ING, I mean, for the situation that is making us feel that emotion. Así que esa es la parte de los participle adjectives que siempre tenemos que tener en cuenta. Los ED son para nuestros sentimientos y el ING para lo que los provoca. I will send a list of uh, words in which you are not going to have the, uh, the example, but you are going to have the list of words that we can use for the, past, the participle adjective. So I, would, I will send a document that I find for you to the group in which you can see the examples. And I was saying that we are going to have an exercise about uh, the uh, list that we have in this case, so I will write the sentence on the document and you are going to have the sentence there tomorrow. So you can read the sentence when you have time and we are going to solve the sentences when we begin the, um, the session tomorrow. So, Voy a escribir las oraciones eh, en el documento. Ustedes tienen acceso libre al documento. Y voy a escribir eh, los ejercicios. Y mañana al entrar a la sesión, vamos a darle respuesta a esas oraciones. In that case, we are going to choose the correct adjective in each situation. Um, I'm going to write both words. The word with the ing and the word with the ed. So you are going to read the sentence and you are going to find what is the better option for that uh, sentence. Then we are going to solve the exercise. And then that is the activity that we are going to perform tomorrow at the beginning of the session. So I will write, um, I think there are 20. Uh, Examples. I mean, 20 sentences in which you are going to find the uh, ING or the ED. So, we are going to see each other tomorrow. Uh, remember that you have to um, look for the examples or the exercises in the document tomorrow. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow in session three. Good night. 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 Good